Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Chains Fighters Anthology as we continue with the Baltic Campaign. Now, um, the last time we were trying to stem the Russian efforts to, uh, go to attack us, but, um, they're making very rapid progress in the Baltics, as the enemy typically does during these campaigns, so let's see what else we can do to stemmy them today. Warthog Charge. Panavasis Air Base. Date July 15th, local time 0630 hours. Weather clear. Situation USAF A 10s, designed during the Cold War to bust tanks over the tactical battlefield of Central Europe, have finally discovered the reason de, sorry, the raison d'etre. Mission objective No matter how much armor they carry, the A 10s are vulnerable to enemy fighters. Your mission is to protect the flight of A 10s as they strike armored units massing outside Dog Ave the Pile. How are you say that? Threat suppression data. Ground opposition, SA-13, CSU-23 4s, air opposition, probable SU-35s, and MiG-29s, electronic intelligence, support aircraft, none. So, I have a confession to make in that this mission is what kept me from beating the entire game. Because, um, you know, trying to do this with the Eurofighter is uh, kind of tough. I feel like I could do better with the F-22, but, um... The way they have the Aerofighter modeled in here is kind of limited. So here we see there's three A-10s that we'll have to uh, protect until... Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, it doesn't show all the information I want. But uh, I imagine it looks like they're going to uh, actually... Yeah, okay, so they head down south to here, I think. Oh, I don't see another waypoint for them. Or maybe... Maybe this is the release point. Uh, no, that's coming up. So, okay. A-10 rendezvous. So this has to be the A-10 point. Huh. Okay, I guess I can't see all the waypoints, and that's fine. But, um, but yeah, we gotta keep all three alive. And we start landed, and, um, there's gonna be some MiG-29s that come from over here, and then there's gonna be Su-35s that come from here. The Su-35s are really the biggest threat because they carry, uh... Well, because they carry that, uh, anti-AWACS missile. I'd be willing to experiment with this. I don't know how the Mika compares in game. The Amram if it has a longer range. It's a lighter missile, so I presume it's uh, inferior performance. But ah, uh, God, this mission, this mission. It also caused me to uh, well try and record this episode. I found the strategy that almost works, but uh, uh, kind of escaping through the death scene made me uh, delete my pilot accidentally, or not delete him, but perma kill him. Because uh, normally when he dies, you get a pop-up, you know, do you want to continue and you know, do you want to try again? And by hitting escape, it's like, oh, you want to hit? No, I don't want to try again. And so it perma-killed him. So that was a uh, fun little bit trying to revive him for this, but managed to do it. So we're going to take Amrams, because I think that's the longest range missile we have, actually. I mean, mm, we could do adders. But those are going to have a shitty success rate, so... Yeah, Amrams... I, I, I did consider this EM pulse weapon, but it turns out it has a... Sh it looks like it's just an Amram with an EMP effect. But actually, the EMP effect is all it does. It doesn't do any damage. And, I mean, I, I haven't been hit by it, but I presume it shuts off your... Disables, like, your radar and IR and your other sensors. But yeah, it doesn't do any damage, and it has a significantly shorter range than the Amram, so we're not going to be using that. Uh, what we will be doing, though, is we will be taking a jammer pod with us to kind of try to... Because ideally, we're going to soak up the, uh, the missiles that the flankers fire uh, by jamming them out, and uh, hopefully that will work, but I guess we'll see. All right, so we're going to do, uh, well, first we want to get into the air as quickly as possible. That's priority number one. Let's turn our radar to our jammer. Stealth actively hurts us in this mission. 
airborne. So it's, because if they aren't angling at us, they're angling at the apex. So let's get airborne. There's two things I really want to do here. And I think this is the way I want to go. Yeah, so first off, we're going to have our women attack those make 29s because they're going to uh, they're going to go after the robots. And I think somewhere over here. Ah, yes, here it is. This is where the uh, flankers spawn, and these guys are a royal pain in the ass, let me tell you. Because uh, they have a shit ton of anti awax weapons. Looks like our wingman's doing fine for now. We're going to just start unloading on these guys at this point. We'll get two air ramps off the rail, and another two for his buddy. Looks like our women got two down, so that's good. Alright, I think we got them taking evasive maneuvers now. Uh, so that's going to work in our favor. I think we're close enough that their stuff is more easily decoyed. Although, unfortunately, it doesn't seem... Hey, we got one! That will greatly reduce the number of missiles we have to deal with. And he's still trying to use his anti awax missiles, it looks like. Or at least his adders, maybe. But we're going to keep closing. And uh, we're going to let two of our own off the rails, and we got him. We freaking got him. We still have that uh, ground missile to defend to contend with, but it's a lot less accurate than his anti max to the point where our jammer should be able to mostly take care of it. With a little help from Jack here and there, which we have a fair amount left because we rushed over here. But we're just going to deal with this guy, and then we're going to help our wingman, and we should be able to um, wrap things up then. So. Got him. And uh, if we uh, head over to where our wingman is, let's range out, make sure the uh, A10s are safe. One and two. Alright, they are safe. So at this point, we're going to go this way because there's a flight of MiG-21s here that we may have to intercept, but other than that, we might actually be home free for a change, which is good because we have damn near no fuel left. But here's the... Well, the A-10s are going on their merry way. They are busting tanks left and right. Okay, so these are the nuclear ones. And then you can see there's uh, an X-31 there, or an X-29, one or the other. Um, they should be able to handle the big point ones, but they don't. They could be a threat to the A-10, so we got to kind of keep an eye on that. X-29, yeah. Which I really don't want to get involved, because our fuel is kind of critical at this point, but... I suppose we can make a detour. Alright, they a rolled onto the X-29s. Okay, so we'll let our wingmen just rip it up. Holy shit, there's a lot of them. Yeah, we're helping. <laughs> our wingmen started uh, unloading on them. And uh, fortunately, it seems these guys don't stand much of a chance. Kind of surprised Russia still using all these MiG-21s, I mean, you know, there's something to be said for numbers, but at this point, you're literally just throwing away the lives of your aviators, because these are just missile targets. Alright. 
Well, they should be clear, so now we really are just waiting on the A-10s, which uh, we're going to swing around, and I want to get a radar lock on one of them, just to uh, keep an eye on them. It looks like one of them got damaged, uh, probably from ground fire. It's unfortunately, you know, they're like, oh, defend them from air attack. But they can still take ground fire, but it looks like they're done with their tank busting mission. So they are heading back. So hopefully once they reach their release point, we will have successfully completed the mission. Hopefully. So in the meantime, there's really nothing else we can do for them. We're dry, you know, both in terms of munitions and in terms of fuel. So, uh, yeah, let's get up. Oh my god. We did it. We fucking did it. And somehow we didn't take a hit. Which is really good, because like I said, those AWACS, anti-AWACS missiles, the least amount of damage they'll do to you is typically around 75% damage to your airframe, plus one or two disabled subsystems. I've had it, uh, I've had them take out my, um, my flare dispenser, which was right as I entered, uh, IR range, so, you know, that didn't help much with the, uh, the uh, Archer missiles, I've had them take out my radar, I've had them take out my fuel lines, which was another time where like, I technically beat the mission by, you know, protecting the A-10s, but then I couldn't make it back to base. And I touched down too hard to, uh, to be able to save the aircraft, because that at least I could have said, okay, I landed behind friendly lines, you know, I'll restore the, you know, the fighter was recovered, you know, or hell, I'd even take the fighter casualty at this point, but... So we, uh, we beat this mission fair and square using the intended fighter, because I think with the F-22 that would have been easier as well, because you can carry more AMRAMs, you don't need all the jamming, because you just have stealth to help you, and you can you have enough fuel you can basically afterburn over to the McCoyines, deal with them, then afterburn over to the uh, Su-35s, deal with them, and, uh, you know, before they can lob too many missiles at you, and, you know, it just works, and the Eurofighter doesn't have that. You know, especially, um, actually, you guys didn't get to see it, because that was in my pre, uh, permadeath video, but, uh, or attempt at a video, but, uh, I was playing around with the loadouts, you know, because I'm like, oh, hey, maybe these EMP AMRAMs will help. Which, you know, they didn't. They were too short range and that did no damage. Um, but, you know, it's just the loadout, the, the way you can place munitions on the uh, Eurofighter just really sucks because in your first hard point on your center line, you can have a fuel tank or you can have a targeting pod or you can have a countermeasure pod. And that's it. So it's like, okay, you know, I'd like to put a FLIR on that. And then. Uh, you know, just out the targeting the sidewinders, or we could take extra fuel. You know, either one would work, I think. Um, but then your next hard point is on the fuselage, and there's four hard points, and you can take four jammers, four jamming pods, or you can take four countermeasure pods, or you can take four amrams. You can't like mix it up and be like, oh, I want you know two jamming pods and two countermeasure pods, because that. Honestly, with that, I, I would have been willing to go in with just sidewinders at that point. Our wingman would probably have a harder go of it, because the AI can't be as uh, creative as we are, but... Um, also, I don't think they use the jammers as effectively, but... But in any case, you know, that would have been fine. But no, you can't mix and match. And as it turns out, there's a couple more... There's some hard points on the wing. There's like another four hard points on the wing but they can only carry Mavericks or Sidewinders, which I don't get, because if you can carry the weight of a Maverick, you can carry an Amrick. And they're obviously air-to-air -air compatible since they have the, uh, you can carry Sidewinders on them, so I don't get why I can't just put Amrams on them, which that would have been, you know, the next best thing, you know, have Amrams on them, you know, and then uh, follow up with, um, and the wingtips have two AIM-9s for close in. That would have been ideal. 
and the game just doesn't let you do it, which is really a pain in the ass. I, I thought it wouldn't be too bad other than this mission going with the Eurofighter, but it's like fighting me for every little thing I want to do. It's like, come on guys, Eurofighter doesn't suck that much. Actually, it doesn't really suck at all. It's a pretty decent fighter by all counts. Uh, very much the equal, or possibly even slightly superior to the uh, Super Hornet, but... God damn. In this game, it the loadout just fights you, and it fights you, and it fights you. <sighs> oh well. We made it back safe. The A-10s made it back safe. Our wingmen even made it back safe, which I was kind of worried that I was sending them on a suicide mission against those... Uh, Make 29 say we got x29s there yeah he's only average too so that kind of surprised me he must have uh used up all his um oh hi how are you i'm taller than you for some reason <laughs> not really but the camera it, i guess the takeaway here okay bye oh hey the x29 said we helped for landing but uh i think the takeaway here just from noticing that is I think when we're the camera for being in the cockpit isn't like here it's actually more like up here which is kind of interesting and I wonder yeah because we're about mid-level with the tail so instead of like seeing the base we're, we're like up there so we're up here that's kind of interesting but uh, in any case we're gonna end the mission here Wow, and we don't even get a medal for that, for all the difficulty of that mission. Hopefully this is the hardest mission in the game. I know um, there was another one that I know someone had problems with, uh, where like we had a steel Eurofighter or something, and uh, I ended up just running it below radar, mission silent, and that was enough to get it home safe, and so having the fight through, you know, dozens of, or at least a half dozen AMRAM wielding fighters, but... This definitely felt like one of the hardest missions in the game where, like, you know, you could, yeah, you could switch to the F-22, but you're technically with the German Air Force in this, you know, in our little head cannon, or at least mine, you know, we're an exchange pilot on loan from the Navy, you know, back from our original campaign. Uh, you know, first we exchange program with the Air Force, now we're, we're an exchange program with the German Air Force, but, you know, so that's why I want to use the Eurofighter, because that's what Germany uses. You know, they don't use the F-22, they don't use the you know, but, so I'm probably making this mission harder on me than it has to be, but, in any case, debrief. Anavay's Air Base, date July 11th, Mission Warthog Charge, resolution success, fine work keeping those enemy fighters off the A-10s. Wow, our women didn't take any damage, so we had four fighter kills, he had three, so we had, um, we had a MiG-21, and I believe all three of uh, the flankers, I think, is that right? Yeah. And then he had uh, the three MiG-29s, and then we uh, apparently killed a Russian pilot while he was ejecting. I'm not going to shed any tears for that one. Uh, so all but, looks like all but one or two of our missiles hit, which is great. Our wingman had only a 50% hit, but uh, that's fine. The failed one, that could, one of those but very well then he shot at something we we or someone else already destroyed like with the mig 21s uh we had six missile launches on us we spoofed all of them there were three sam launches two spoofed one failed but actually our jammer didn't really come into play according to this at least that's kind of interesting the one missile launch on our wingman which failed and uh no attempts by the aa to hit us so we are going to do <laughs> that should be 20% for all the high G maneuvers we are pulling, but uh, we are going to do the regular maintenance on our Eurofighter, and uh, now we have officially entered uncharted territory, because, like I said earlier, this mission always stopped me, but now we're past it, so I have no idea what comes to next, not even a general idea, like the other campaigns, you know. Yeah, I might have known of certain missions or, you know, the general order of things, but now I have no clue. So, from this point on, it's blind, everyone. So with that, thank you all for watching and stay tuned for next time. And stay safe out there, and we'll see you then.